Be 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 be. Hi everyone, Calthony Name Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Igloo Ghost album, Lay, Line, Eon. This is the new long-awaited sophomore album from UK electronic music producer Igloo Ghost, finally following up 2017's maximal and overwhelming Neo Wax Bloom. A splash of a debut, which was not only the next step past the trademark wonky stylings of Brain Feeder Records, but also like discovering a new musical dimension entirely. All the imaginative lore behind Igloo's music at the time certainly helped, too. Now, now, I remember Igloo had some quality sister EPs that dropped in 2018, but I actually didn't realize just how low-key he's been playing it over the past few years. Now returning with his second commercial release here after a few teasers, this time he's putting it out through his Glue record label, and he seems to be taking a radically different approach this time around. Don't get me wrong, Igloo Ghost is still dealing in sounds that are quite wondrous, feel like they're coming from another galaxy, but if you're going Going into this project simply seeking the rhythmically berserk bangers that defined his 2017 record, you may come out of this sorely disappointed. And that's obviously not to say Igloo Ghost has lost touch with his sound or something, because I think if you take that Neo Wax record and you plunge your fist into it, pulling out the little seeds of mysterious and organic instrumentation that orbited many of those beats, and plant them and just allow their roots to sprawl out wildly for several years, after that, you're sort of landing in the ballpark of Ley Line Eon. I mostly see this project as that same Igloo Ghost magic, but delivered in a different language. Less trigonometry bangers and more like the gentle folk song of intergalactic tribesmen. Yeah, overall it may not be as visceral, but there's still tons of details to eat up. Between the gorgeous strings and alien bass hits, soft otherworldly vocals, as well as plucky electronics, because even even when taking a softer approach, Igloo Ghost's sound play and sound craft is unparalleled. Maybe the closest point of comparison I can make to this record is Bjork's Vespertine, but you would never mistake one for the other. There are a few Orange Milk Records releases that come to mind as well. To get into the track list here, the first song serves as a really great introduction to the record's general instrumental palette. It also sounds like a combination between a futuristic computer booting up and a a curious classical piece that's building up anticipation for a lively second movement. Pure Gray Circle extends a lot of these same mystical vibes, but enhances them with bigger bass hits and passages of percussion, strange string leads and glitchy whispered spoken word. It's a banger, but a beautifully perplexing one, and maybe more appealing to people who might have thought that Neo Wax was rhythmically a little too much. Sylph Fossil takes things in an even glitchier and darker direction. I love the way the first three songs thus far have seamlessly progressed to this point. It makes the entire record feel just really holistic. The whispered spoken word returns on this track once again, but this time it feels a little angrier, edgier. There's more bite to the bass and the percussion too. It's like every element of the previous song is just meaner. However, I do feel like the record begins to get a little spotty past this point, uh, starting with Light Gutter, which I generally do like the change in style this song brings to the table, but it's just difficult to envision Lola's voice, the guest singer on this track, as like really fitting snugly into the Igloo Ghost Sonic universe, because the singing does feel so regular, so of this world. It's just not nearly as eclectic or as eccentric as everything else surrounding it on this project. Meanwhile, Big Protector is yet another large, beautiful display of sound, but the structure on this one is off to me. The whole first half feels like it's just building up to a payoff that never really happens. And this track is packed with so many incredible sounds, and yet there's so little in terms of like momentum or progression to any of it, and yet also it's just too busy and active to qualify as an ambient piece. Vocally, Baby on the track UI Birth does seem like a much more sensible fit aesthetically. Her gentle and breathy croons just feel like they were born out of Igloo Ghost's universe. The songwriting and structure here on this track don't seem to be as strong or as direct as they were on the first several songs here, though. As Igloo will seemingly present a musical idea, 
only to in a few moments just crush it with a detour into some harsh electronics and then just trail off into something else. Ultimately, the track to me reads like a very average and low-key Igloo Ghost song, but with a lot of sonic distractions orbiting it. The following zones you can't see in my opinion hits, but I'm actually way more perplexed by Amu Disc Mod. The mix on this one, in my opinion, is just not really up to Igloo's stellar standards thus far in his discography. The children's choir that he has going throughout the track. It's just not recorded very well, so it doesn't melt into the mix nicely, and maybe there's an effort to overcompensate for that with many of the electronics on the track coming off harsher than they normally sound on the rest of the LP, to the point where it is slightly painful to listen to. Next, Soil Bolt, yet another song that doesn't really have a strong sense of direction. It certainly creates a vibe off the same synthetic and folksy sounds we've been hearing so far, but flow-wise I just feel like an ambient interlude is the last thing the record needs at this point. Especially since the closer is really no finale, the detailed beats and strings here are nice, but they don't really add anything to to this record the previous tracks didn't already. In some ways, I feel like the track packages up some not-so-great characteristics of the LP. It's ornate, but also kind of one note. It's lush, but also weirdly indirect. Unfortunately, as much as I was anticipating this LP, and as much as, in theory, I do appreciate and like the idea of Igloo Ghost going a little softer, uh, going a little easier, trying to strip back the density and the insanity to really expose the subtle nuances and beauty of his talents, his production abilities. I just can't say I'm crazy about the end result here. There were some production choices I thought were questionable compositions that to me came off very bland or awkward, and as unique as the sound of this project is, there's not a whole lot of variety to the way it sounds from front to back. Stylistically and sonically, I hear more versatility between the two EPs that Igloo Ghost put out in 2018 than I do here. Feeling a light to decent six on this one, transition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Igloo Ghost, forever.